Hey guys, Heidi Preep here. Welcome back to my channel. Today is a video that is partially a rant. If you've been around for a while, you know that maybe a third of my videos start off this way. But I am getting very sick of a particular thing that I keep hearing people say online, in pop culture, and what that phrase is, is people claiming they are too nice. I would like to state for the record that I don't believe there is such a thing as being too nice. I think we live in a world that is brutal and where people are largely actually quite inconsiderate towards each other and that often when we say we are being too nice, what we actually mean is that we are having too many fond responses. Now, the problem is that the average person does not know what a fond response is. So they assume that the problem is that they're just too nice. And in order to try to resolve the problem, they then become giant inconsiderate assholes who don't take anyone else's needs into account whatsoever. And I think that this issue at large really feeds into the current culture we have of hyper-individualism, where the narrative is like, cut people off, look at everyone else's toxic, you're not getting along with someone, it must be because they're a narcissist. And what is this culture doing for all of us? It is, for the most part, making us more isolated, more lonely, and more mutually misunderstood than we were before. And I think that the problem is we are missing the middle ground here. So on one end of this kind of pendulum, I see fawn responses. What is a fawn response? A fawn response is part of what Pete Walker, who is a psychotherapist who specializes in complex PTSD, calls one of the four F responses. The four F responses are what happens when our sympathetic nervous system is activated and we are in what is commonly thought of as a fight or flight response. So generally, this is when we're picking up on some sort of perceived threat in our environment and our bodies are responding to it as though it is real danger. And in these cases, whether we are in real danger or not, our body tends to choose one of four responses. We either fight, we become combative and ready to go into battle, whether that's physical or emotional, or we go into flight, so we try to get out of the situation, or we might freeze and kind of dissociate or become numb to the situation or stop responding to it, or we might fawn. When we are fawning, what we're doing is almost giving ourselves amnesia about all of our own wants and needs and deciding in that moment that the only thing that's important is giving the other person or people involved what they want or need. And the fawn response is actually very adaptive in many cases. So when we're young, if we're in the presence of intimidating authority figures who are going to punish us in some way for asserting our own wants and needs, it's adaptive to stay quiet, numb ourselves to our own wants and needs, and defer to whatever the authority figure wants. In fact, I would go so far as to say in North America, this is how we train and condition children to behave right? What is going to elementary school other than getting punished if you assert your wants and needs at a time when you're supposed to be listening to the authority figures and doing something else? So I think that so many people, and I think women might be a little bit more likely on average to have an overactive fond response than men based on the way that women are socialized, which is to be polite and agreeable and not make a fuss. But the problem is that we mix up that obedient fond response with the experience of being a nice person. Being a nice person does not mean failing to state your wants and needs and giving other people whatever they want. Being a nice person means making your own wants and needs clear and then also listening to other people's wants and needs and finding solutions that work for everybody, which could be a range of things. It could be, okay, tonight we'll eat where I want and tomorrow we'll eat where you want. Or it could be, let's find a place we both kind of like. Or it could be, let's go eat at different places for dinner so we both get what we want because that's more important to us than having this meal together. There are so many different solutions that can be found when you are choosing the nice response of asserting your own needs, listening to other people's, and then finding what works for both of you. So if this is a pendulum and we have fawning over here and we have kind communication in the middle, what's over here is being inconsiderate and saying, okay, I'm gonna go from never asserting what I want all the way over here to only asserting what I want and assuming that if anyone else wants something different, it's their job to speak up for themselves. I'm not gonna ask, I'm not gonna pay attention to anyone else's wants. I'm gonna assert the crap out of my own wants and needs. And if anyone tells me it makes them uncomfortable, I'm gonna call them toxic. Now, are there times to assert your own wants and needs and not worry about other people's? Yes. 
Is that usually the case? No. Usually the case is if we want to be pro-social beings who have happy relationships, we need to start speaking up for ourselves as well as incorporating what other people want to need. And depending on where you're starting from, if you err on the side of fawning, you might need to do a lot of work in learning to tune into your own wants and needs and then communicate them. And if you err on the side of extreme self-reliance, you might need to do some work around learning to listen to other people's wants and needs and incorporating those. But the middle point is that happy medium here, right? Kindness is not equivalent to being a doormat. It's not equivalent to erasing your sense of self. And it's not equivalent to staying quiet about what you want and need. What people are describing when they say all of those things is the fawn response. So a quick kind of lexicon here, rule of thumb that I wrote down just to keep things crystal clear before we go into examples is that a fawn response is what happens when what we authentically want is at odds with what another person wants and we either dissociate from what we want or are dishonest about what we want in order to keep the peace. Or I think kind of a subset of the fawn response could be that when we express what we want, we expect the other person to caretake us. So instead of being assertive about what we want, we go, oh, I kind of want this. I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and apologize over and over or something like that, right? And in that case, we're expecting the other person to come make us feel better about what we want. So we're looking for caretaking rather than taking responsibility for what our wants and needs are. And then being inconsiderate is when we are asserting our own wants and needs without any care or consideration or respect for how our wants and needs impact other people. So this is one I imagine I've had to catch myself on quite a bit in my own life. I learned early on that I am to speak up and say what I want or else I'm not gonna get it. And in many cases, I would take advantage of that when I was in social environments where I knew that was not the norm. So I would state clearly and confidently what I wanted. And then if other people were seeming kind of wishy-washy or uncomfortable, I would tell myself, well, it's their job to say what they want if they want their needs and wants acknowledged. So if no one's gonna speak up, I'm gonna go ahead and enforce what I want. And that was a way of evading responsibility for the impact of my actions, right? Now, again, the middle ground, which is kindness, is when we calmly and clearly and assertively state what we want and also make sure we're checking in and getting a sense of what other people want and then finding the balance between those things or finding out how those things can coexist. So a couple of examples. Let's say someone asks you for a favor that you don't really want or have the resources to do. Fawn response is to say yes when you secretly want to say no and to grow resentful as you complete the favor because you knew the whole time you didn't really wanna take that on. Or again, it might be a situation where you say no, but then you need them to caretake you around it. So you're saying things like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I don't have the time. Please don't be mad at me, don't be mad at me. Right, instead of saying, hey, that's actually not something that I'm capable of taking on. Here's what's going on for me right now. I totally hear that you're looking for someone to help with that project, but unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to help you this time. Now, the inconsiderate response is to gleefully turn down the request for help without any consideration for, let's say, the times that that person has helped you out, without recognizing that you have a strong friendship or work relationship, and that there is a level of respect that you need to show someone as you are saying no to them, if they have shown you the same respect in the past, or if they've been willing and available to help you out in similar situations. So. Fond response, yes when you mean no. Inconsiderate response, gleefully saying no with no respect to the underlying relationship involved. Kind response, saying no and explaining why you're unable to take that on and showing some care or compassion for the fact that this person's in a bind and needs some help. Maybe offering them the number of someone who you think could help them or just empathizing and going, yeah, I hear you're in a tough spot there I, and I'm really sorry that it's not something I have the time for right now, right? You can say no and still show a lot of care and respect for the other person's feelings. Another situation where I think fond responses come up quite a bit is when someone is mad at us. So someone has come to you and they have explained to you that they're either uncomfortable with something you did or that they're mad at you for something you did. The fond response is usually to immediately apologize don't think at all about why you did that thing or what led you to do that thing or what your side of the situation was. Just tell them you're sorry, tell them you wanna make it up to them, agree to any requests or demands they have about what they want you to do to make it up to them. 
All of that is usually a fun response if it's quick and immediate like that, right? Because usually when it comes to actions that we want to change or that we realize are impacting someone else negatively, there's a period where we need some time to think about it and figure out what a better way to approach that situation would be. And so it's often kind of inauthentic if we're moving immediately into apologizing. It's usually a fun response. Now the flip side of this, the inconsiderate response, kind of reminds me of there's this concept called emotional libertarianism that I've come across a couple of times over the years. And the idea is that everyone is completely responsible for their own emotional reactions and nobody should do anything at all to kind of caretake or take responsibility for the way that someone else is feeling. And I think that self-responsibility when it comes to emotions is incredibly important. So being able to say, I'm having this response, I own it as my own, I'm not saying that you caused my feelings, right? But I'm sharing my feelings with you. I think that's healthy. But the flip side of this is someone comes to you and they say, you know, you hurt my feelings, something you did was painful for me. And your response is, well, you go deal with it, right? I'm not gonna think at all about how my actions affect other people. I'm not going to help other people in any way heal or move on from the ways that I've hurt them. I'm just going to say your feeling, your responsibility and be done with it. That is the inconsiderate response. And the kind response, of course, strikes that middle ground between I'm hearing that I hurt you and that I upset you. Here's what was going on for me. Let's put our competitive wants and needs on the table that obviously led to this conflict and let's figure it out together, right? So it can be, I'm sorry I hurt you, and also I have needs and wants that maybe aren't being considered that is leading to this conflict. Let's see where we can find the middle ground once everyone's wants and needs are on the table. And this goes back to that most classic example on earth, where do you wanna eat for dinner, right? Fawning is I wanna eat wherever you wanna eat. Being inconsiderate is I wanna eat where I wanna eat and I don't care where you wanna eat, but I need you to come with me. And the kind response is let's find a compromise if it's important to both of us that we eat dinner together. So to figure out if you are fawning or if you are being kind, ask yourself these questions. One, am I aware of what my needs and wants are in this situation if this other person weren't present? If someone is asking you, what do you wanna eat for dinner? And you truly do just wanna eat whatever they wanna eat. Ask yourself, if this person were gone, what would I eat for dinner? And that's your true underlying need or want. Next question to ask yourself, have I made my wants and needs clear? So have I told the person, I'm not that fussy about where we wanna eat for dinner, but if you weren't around, I would probably eat Indian food. What are your thoughts? Right, now you've at least voiced what your preferences are. And sometimes it's easier to think of it that way. Instead of thinking of it as a need or a want, think of it as a preference. And then have I checked in and asked what the other person wants or needs? And this is important to make sure you're not just swinging the pendulum all the way to the other end of the spectrum, right? And going, I want Indian, let's go there. That might get you the dinner you want, but it's not gonna be the most conducive tool for having healthy reciprocal long-term relationships, right? So it depends what your goal is. And I think that sometimes people in this process do need to distance themselves a little bit. When you are getting in touch with your wants and your needs and your underlying beliefs and thoughts and preferences in the world after a lifetime of being disconnected from them, sometimes it does help to take some time alone, figure out what those things are when no one else is around impacting you, and then you're gonna find it easier as you re-emerge and re-engage in your social life to at least have an idea of what those preferences are, even if you don't feel super confident stating them right from the get-go. But the important part here is to keep in mind it is not nice to not make your wants and needs known. If anything, that just creates these kind of weird one-sided relationships where other people are always trying to guess at what you want and where they kind of feel like the asshole because they're always calling the shots. And this isn't to shame you or say you're a bad person for having a fond response. It's a completely natural, instinctual response that comes up in situations where you might not even be aware it's coming up, right? But the thing to note is that it's not you being too nice. It's you fawning. The nice thing is to put your wants and needs and preferences on the table, listen and seek out the wants, needs and preferences of other people, and then find a way to work together towards a solution that satisfies both of you. And if the other person is unwilling to work towards a solution with you, then maybe it's time to just go with your own needs and part ways with that person, right? But you're never going to know the answer to that until you are making what you want and need clear. That is 
unquestionably the nice thing to do. All right, that's all I've got in me for today on this particular topic, but let me know your thoughts, feelings, responses to this video in the comments. Are you a fawner? Are you someone who is only just now coming into the realization that that's what they've been doing? Or have you been aware of that patterning for a while now? I'm very curious about where all of you guys are at with this. So let me know below. And as always, I love you guys. I hope you're taking care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you back here again really soon.